<laughs> wow. So, uh, so can we wear shorts? <laughs> and I, I appreciate uh, Brother Rick. Uh, Brother Rick uh, Dudley is actually preparing himself for the walk. And, uh, are you going to uh, do one better? Huh? So mild, Praise God. Hallelujah. We'll be there. July. We will uh, support. Uh, uh, July. Uh, what, what is it again? August 9th. Amen. And we'll support that. Praise God. Now, before we, uh, as you know, that this collection uh, that we are uh, that they are raising actually goes to the fund where we support our missionaries. And this is where, you know, our support for our missionaries are going. And we praise God because uh, we are actually uh, helping the ministry of the Lord. Anything that is going on in the mission field, brethren. Souls are saved and anything that is not in the mission field, you have a part. But I have one additional thing I mentioned to you last Sunday, brethren, uh, before I dismiss the kids. I have uh, asked you to uh, discuss it with your spouse. Because I want, I want uh, you uh, to, uh, you know, uh, give freely on this uh, uh, project. Now, we have a daughter church in, uh, I am confused sometimes, either in Navotas or Malabon. Okay, in, in, that is in Navotas. And uh, this is our daughter church, and that is Harvest International Christian Church in Navotas. And I want us to help this church there. So, uh, can we see some pictures? Uh, is it okay, Angela? We want to dismiss the kids yet at this time. towards this project so what we're gonna do before we dismiss I mean before we dismiss the kids I mean is that we will pledge amen so whatever the Holy Spirit is touching you to give if the Lord is touching you to give ten thousand dollars that's it and I will start preaching amen so uh, hallelujah so uh, my wife and I are pledging five hundred dollars towards this project so, uh, anyone would like to pledge one thousand dollars? All right. So this is what we're gonna do, brother. I'm gonna open it before open the pledge, brother Henry. How much you're pledging? Are you doing like that or <laughs> one thousand? <laughs> you're pledging one thousand. So one thousand dollars. So. Uh, so let's let's uh, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you, amen. Young people, you can also pledge. If you want to pledge, one one dollar is fine. So uh, uh, yes, uh, one thousand dollars for the two thousand five hundred. So uh, yes, brother Tony, five hundred, five hundred dollars. Mr. Richard, are you raising your hand? I mean, oh, I thought you were raising or uh, raising your hand. You or or uh, your five hundred. What is that? Five hundred pounds. Oh, five hundred dollars. 
We have to renew our mind daily. I, I explained to you uh, about, uh, you know, the truth. The Bible tells us, and you will know the what? And you will know the truth. Now, who is the truth? Pilate said, who is the truth? And the truth shall set you free. Now, he's speaking, of course, the truth is the Lord Jesus Christ is a person and what? The Word of God. And you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And actually what is speaking there, the truth, once you learn about the truth, it will help you heal in your soul. It will help heal your soul. And the Bible tells us, and, uh, as the Son set you free, you will be free indeed. Now there are two points that we're going to consider there. Freedom and deliverance comes from knowing the truth and comes by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, you know the power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and this is what we need to discover as Christians brethren. There is power in the name of Jesus and you have to learn how to use the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Last Sunday I uh, shared to you about what? DUI. <laughs> you remember DUI? That you uh, DUI that is well, you are driving under the influence. And I mentioned to you, I shared to you that there is a possibility that you as a Christian, even though you have been a Christian for many many years, that the enemy could come and influence you. Now he cannot own you. Who owns you, by the way? Yes. Jesus. No one can take away your salvation. But Satan can come, you know, and influence us. And I mentioned to you that what's uh, actually Satan is uh, happy over and, and, and he is so, uh, you know, uh, joyous about are the skeptics and the what? And the superstitious. And you have to be careful, brethren. We believe, according to the scripture, that Satan and demons, they are real, brethren. They are real. Hallelujah. And uh, if we are not careful, if you do not know the word of God, you know what will happen, brethren? You will be under the influence. And of course, if you are under the influence, we need help. We need help. The only way we can be delivered, the only way we can be helped by the Lord is to acknowledge that we need help. Amen? Amen. That we need help. If you do not acknowledge that you need help, you do not admit that you need help, brethren, you won't experience deliverance in your life. You won't experience healing in your life. You need help. I need help. And the only way I can be delivered and be helped is to admit that I need the Lord. Amen? And we praise God because we know that there is deliverance in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. There is deliverance in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So like what I said last Sunday, if you have been, you know, uh, confessing and repenting of a sin over and over and over again, that is no longer a weakness, brethren. That is no longer a weakness. That is bondage that we needed to be delivered of. We need to be released from that. And we know that in the name of Jesus, we have deliverance. We have deliverance. All right. So what we will be talking about today, brethren, is I want to reveal to you the works of demons, the demonics. So beware of the demonics or demons. So this is spiritual warfare and I want to unveil to you what demons could do and what they are doing in the life of many people today and in the life of those yielded to the work of darkness. Now, of course, uh, we have these passages in Acts chapter 13 and we will go to that. And have you seen Habakkuk or Habakkuk? In your scripture all right now let's go to Acts chapter 13 verse 40 and 41 Acts chapter 13 40 and 41 actually Paul was preaching to the believers at, the, at, at these points and he was actually preaching about Jesus 
and he end his message with caution. He end his, he concluded his message with caution. Now in Acts 13, 40, 41, it says here, Beware, therefore, beware, therefore, lest what has been spoken in the prophets come upon you. So the caution here is that he was actually leaving this local church and he said that wolves will come to your place, will come to your church. And that's why he's saying, beware therefore, lest what has been spoken the prophets come upon you. So if you will uh, analyze this chapter in chapter 13, he is actually referencing this chapter about the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if you will go back in this verse, I want us to uh, see who is the prophet that Paul is referencing to. Because he said here, last, what has been spoken in the prophets come upon you. And he mentioned here plural, but I want us to go to one particular prophet who actually prophesied of what will come in the future. Now this is about the Chaldeans. So let's go to Habakkuk or Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 5 and 6. It says here, look among the nations and watch, be utterly astounded, for I will work a work in your days which you would not believe, though it were told you. In verse 6 it says here, for indeed I am raising up the Chaldeans, a bitter hasty nation which marches through the breath of the earth to possess dwelling place that are not theirs. Now, I want you to understand, brethren, that this passage is actually what Paul is referencing in chapter 13 of the book of Acts. He is mentioning about this Chaldeans. Now, if you are a historian, brethren, and you know the history of the Chaldeans, you will tell me that you are wrong, Pastor, and you are correct. Because when Paul mentioned about this prophecy of the Chaldeans, the Chaldeans or the nation of the Chaldeans are no longer there during the time of Paul. Because they've been destroyed way back in 539 B.C. And that is before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Chaldeans that he was speaking about in chapter 13 actually were gone. They are a nation as big as the New, uh, New Jersey. And now at this time, they are gone. But what would Paul have been talking about? When he speaks of the Chaldeans in the book of Habakkuk, what is he talking about? All right? I will answer that. He is talking about demons or the demonic. Because the Chaldeans were gone. And he was actually saying in Acts chapter 13, 40, Beware therefore, lest what has been spoken in the prophet come upon you. And in Habakkuk, what he is mentioning here, the prophet mentioned about the Chaldeans, he is actually speaking of the demonics or demons. So when you see the word Chaldeans in the New Testament and even in the Old Testament during the time of Habakkuk, actually he is referencing the Chaldeans are demon as demonics and demons. You call that, I don't know in Spanish, you call that demonio in Tagalog. And uh, Brother Julio, what is his fun in Spanish? Is that the same, Brother John? Demonio and uh, Satanas. And you have heard about this family. And, uh, you know, a child went to school and he said uh, <coughs> the teacher, uh, you know, did not recognize this boy. And uh, the teacher said, What is your name? And he said, My name is Demon. Because in their house, you know, my name is Demon. And he, he was shocked. And then he asked, the teacher asked the boy, what's the name of your dad? 
Satanas. Satanas. <laughs> And then, you know, uh, was the name of your mom? She said, Demonio. And the teacher was upset. Uh, Demonita was upset and said, uh, This girl, what is going on with this boy? And the teacher accompanied the boy. And lo and behold, as soon as, they, as, as, soon as the teacher and the boy entered the house, there was infighting inside the house, and the mom was shouting from the top of her of her voice, and she was talking to the boy, and she said, "Demon, you can't, demon, where have you been?" And then the husband and wife were fighting, and the husband was calling the wife demonio, demonita, and the wife was calling the husband satanas. <laughs> Because the boy was saying to the teacher, when the teacher asked him, where do you live? The boy said, I live in hell. And the teacher had proven that it's true. Because the family is living in hell, they're calling each other demon, satanas, demonita. And the teacher said, I better leave this place in hell. And the story he was hell. Now I want you to understand, brethren, because if you are ignorant of the work of the enemy, you are already defeated. So Chaldeans here represents what again? Demons. If you will go back to Habakkuk chapter one, verse six, in Habakkuk, it says in this uh, in this uh, verse actually, brethren, to possess what again? Dwelling places that are not. Theirs. I mentioned to you about the uh, the demons who possess one individual. How many demons were there in that one individual? Do you remember how many demons? That is how many how many demons? That is six thousand eight hundred and sixty-two demons living because he called himself legion and demons brethren they love to possess a dwelling places that are not theirs they want to come inside a human body they want to possess an animal have you seen a crazy animal brethren i have seen many crazy animals in our place because our place there are i know two mafukula Man, in our place, the man and Norma, do you know them, man? And I know one of them is close to our place. There are witches, and at night, brethren, neighbors are shouting, ah, at two o'clock in the morning, and I know that is the world of the enemy. And they want to reside inside a human body, and if they cannot find a human body, they will reside an animal, and this is the characteristic of evil spirit and demons. They possess dwelling places that are not theirs. All right, let's study about the you know about the Chaldeans. There are three things I want to share with you about the Chaldeans. Number one, brethren, the Chaldeans represents once again? The Chaldeans, they represent demons or, the, or demonics. So there are three things about the Chaldeans or three things about the work of demons. Number one is that they are thieves. They are thieves. You know what a thief is? Rustin? They are thieves. Verse 6, it says to possess dwelling places that are not theirs. So number one, they are thieves. You understand that Satan is a thief. And there are mentions about the name of Satan, and but many times it speaks of actually the work of demons. Now, when you say, I am attacked by Satan, you are not actually literally saying that you are attacked by Satan. What is attacking you actually is not Satan himself, but the demons who are the subjects of Satan. Demons. 
So when you mention about I am attacked by Satan, they it's not Satan actually. They are demons because we understand from the scripture that the you know Satan have many subjects and we call his subjects demons or demonio and there are many many demons but one devil. Now in the King James version it is used devils. But devil is actually a name given, given to Satan. And when you mention about that, you know, attack by Satan, it is actually the attack of the enemy and Satan himself. Because Satan, remember this brethren, he is not omnipresent. He cannot stay in one place at a time, I mean, in many places at a time. You cannot, he is not omnipresent, but our God is, when you say omnipresent, is he is everywhere. Do you know where Satan is right now? Huh? He is not everywhere. Demons are everywhere, but Satan can stay in one place only, not everywhere. Remember that. He is not omnipresent. He is not omni omnipotent. And the other one, he is not omniscient. And understand this, brethren. He doesn't know what you are thinking. He doesn't know what you are thinking. God knows your thinking. And this is where he gets his power. He knows, you know, when to attack. And that's why be careful on what comes out from your mouth. He doesn't know what you are thinking, but he can hear. His demons can hear what you are saying. You remember Job, brethren? If you were in chapter 1, 2 of the book of Job, you know what happened to Job? You know what happened? What happened to Job? All of his children, parents, they died. All of his possessions were taken away. And you know we stole all of his possessions? Huh? The Chaldeans. Go back, read it again. The Chaldeans were the one who stole of his possession. And he said in his word, look at what he said. The things that I afraid of came to pass. He was afraid his children will die. He was confessing it. Oh, my children will die. That's why he will offer sacrifice for his children. He will offer sacrifice for the sin of his children, lest they will sin and, you know, they perish. He was confessing, if you will read it, brethren, what I am fearing came to pass. He was actually confessing the negative thing, and that is why Satan or demons cannot read your mind, but they can hear what you are and that is what they will attack you, Jessica. If you are speaking negative word, oh my die, my 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 husband will die early. Oh, I'm gonna lose my my job. You know, you are confessing, you're confessing, and who, guess what? Who is hearing your confession? Demons are hearing it. Demons are hearing it. And once they hear that, they will come and attack you and share what will happen to you. Because you are confessing the negative things in your life. They will come to pass. They will come to pass. Amen? Because that is where Satan will, or the demons will, attack you. And that's why you have to confess always the word of God and the positive thing. And for instance, you would say, oh, the person, especially in the church, you know, they hurt me. They hurt me. I can go to church and you know, demons have heard that. And they will try their best to stop you. You will lose your, your shoes, the pair of your shoes. You cannot find your socks, brethren, and you don't know what to wear because Satan and demons, they are confusing you. Yeah. Why? Because they, you are confessing what, you know, they want to hear from you. And that's why as Christian believers, we have to be positive and in the Word of God when you are confessing what you want to happen in your life. 
Amen? That's why be careful on what you are speaking. Say amen to your neighbor. Amen. Because they want to steal. That is the work of demons. And I know, you know what they will do? What they will do? They will continue to attack you, brethren. They will continue to come. And you know, the purpose of the evil, the evil spirit and the, and the Satan himself, he comes to what? Steal. To, to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And that is what he will do. Hallelujah. And we are unveiling what demons are actually doing. Listen to this one. Psalms 83, verse 1 to 4, and then verse 12, it says, I do not keep silent, O God. Do not hold your peace and do not be still, O God. In verse 2, for behold, your enemies make a tumult, and, tho and those who hate you have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against you. See this one? Crafty counsel against what again? Your people. people and consulted together against your sheltered ones, your people, your sheltered ones. They have said, come let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. You know who is speaking here, brethren? Yeah, David can say that these are actually his enemies, literal enemies, actually who is speaking here are demons, brethren. These are actually work of darkness and demons. And they are coming after you. If you are coming closer to God, if you are coming to God every day of your life, the more Satan and his cohorts and demon spirit will come after you and they will try to destroy you. Now, how come they are coming after you, brethren? When you are, have you ever experienced that every time, well, you know, when you come close to God, that's how the enemy is there? Isn't, isn't it, brethren? You have, you have a breakthrough, and all of a sudden there is a, an attack in your life. You know why? Because that's the work of the enemy, and they won't be stopped until they get you. Now, how come their focus is towards you, Sister Trini? How come their focus is towards the believers and Christians? Because the unbelievers... They belong to the to the, they belong to Satan. Satan is saying, I don't care about you skeptics and, and sinners. You belong to me. And his attack, actually Rasta, is directed towards us. And you know why he is doing that? To take us. Well, this is what the rima that I received. I, I was I was praying about this, and I said, Lord, how come he is attacking us? And what is the the real reason why he is attacking us? Brethren, remember that your soul is secure. I mean, your spirit is secure. No one can take you out from the hands of God. Can I hear amen? amen. amen. Now, why is he attacking you? Not to unsave you. You know what I mean by unsave you? Not, you know, to take your name away, you know, from the book of life. He is coming to attack you and to defeat you so that you, when you are defeated, do not have the power authority to go out and win souls. That is the reason why he's coming after you. Because he wants you to be discouraged. He wants you to be defeated. That is the reason why he's attacking you every day, every day, every day. And how do we fight the enemy? If he is attacking us every day of our life, we have to pray every day. Jesus. We have to come to Jesus Christ every day of our life. And he is attacking us, brethren, so that we can be defeated. And we do not want to be defeated, brethren, because any Christian who is defeated and discouraged, brethren, will have no power and authority to win souls. And we praise God, we are more than victorious, we are more than conquerors, and we're going to win souls. Amen. And we will not allow the enemy, you know, to defeat us. And that's why it is our choice, again, brethren, that this evil spirit, the Chaldeans, brethren, they are thieves. 
they are there. And you know what the exhaustive dictionary of the Bible name, the, the, how they define the name Chaldeans? As of demons, as it were demons, you know the Chaldeans, they are actually uh, wanderers. And this is what evil spirits are doing, actually, brethren. They grew from one place to another. They wonder. They wonder. And I want us to see Matthew 12, 43, 45, and this is very important, brethren. Matthew 12, 43, 45. When an unclean spirit, spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places, seeking places, and finds none. Let me cite an example. Jerry, will you please stand? And I am only going to use this example. Jerry, because when a man, according to the scripture, if Jerry is not a Christian, and, and uh, he accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you know what happened? Before he became a Christian, who is controlling Jerry? Son? Demons. Demons. You Mary Magdalene has how many demons? Seven. That, that guy that we mentioned last Sunday, how many demons he had in his body? Six thousand. Six thousand legion men. That's why he can break, uh, you know, the feathers, he can break the chains. So what happened? Demons or demons are actually taken out from this temple. Because who took the place of those demons? It is the Lord Jesus Christ. Now take note of this. The Bible tells us, you can, you can be seated, Jerry. In Matthew, it says here, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, when an unclean spirit gets get out from us, when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the unclean spirit goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. So when those evil spirits came out from you, brethren, when you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, they, they went out to look for another place. Because demons are territory, uh, territorial. It's like, you know, dogs. They uh, actually, uh, you know, label their, their place, their territory. You cannot go in the place. They are territorial. And that is what they do. And this is what happened. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came, and when he comes, he finds it empty. You know what happened, Jerry? Those spirit, those spirit, when they are gone from you, Charlie, they will try to come back to you. They will try to come back to you. And how can they influence you, brother? How can this evil spirit who left your body will come back to you? And this is what the scripture is telling us. And when he comes, he finds it what? Empty, swept, and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits who are, you know, more wicked than himself and they enter and dwell there and the last state of that man is worse than the first so shall it also be with this wicked generation i want to think of the sweat and order it is empty now listen to this brethren it is important for you to attend hicc Amen. it's important for you it's important for you to attend the cell group. But I want to tell you, brethren, those are very important. It's important for you, you know, to uh, uh, receive the vision of the church. To attend every cell group or Bible study. But listen to this, brethren. If you do not involve yourself in the ministry, what will happen, brethren? You are considered swept and in order and you are empty have you ever heard of many individuals who have accepted the lord jesus christ and they were great in one year oh they will they are on fire they will be serving the lord they will be sharing their testimony and all of a sudden what happened they backslid. Have you heard the word backslid? 
they turn their back from the Lord. I have experienced that. And in our Bible school, whether in the school where I went, there are many of my classmates who backslid. And they are not serving the Lord anymore. You know why? You know the reason why, brethren? Let me tell you this. If you are not filling your temple, your body, your soul by the words of God, you are empty. If you are empty in your soul, brethren, and the word of God is not coming in into your life, you are considered swept and empty. And you know what Satan will do? He will come, I mean the demons will do. If there are seven who came out from you, he will bring additional 49. And what happened to those who backslid, brethren? Look at their life. Their life is worse than before. <clears throat> so what is the thing that we needed to do in order for the enemy not to come back to us? My responsibility, brethren, is to get and receive more words in me. I have to take in the word of the Lord in me because the Bible says, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. If you are, if you do not know the truth, brethren, and there are no words of God in your life, brethren, you will be easily defeated. You will easily be defeated. You will be discouraged. And what happened, brethren, the enemy will come and take advantage of you and you become more worse than before. Can I hear the amen to that? They got saved, and all of a sudden they turned their back from the Lord because they did not fill their house with the Word of God, and they got worse than before. And that's why, attend yourself, group. I did not hear amen. Yeah. Yeah. Attend Bible study. Attend, you know, the church. Attend your prayer meeting. Because you are actually feeding your soul, brother, by the words of God. You are feeding yourself by the words of God. If I am full of the word of God, I am full of the truth. And the truth will set me free. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's, let's go back to uh, these two things that I want to mention to you. The Chaldeans is told. They are thieves, isn't it? The, the Chaldeans are thieves. And there are two things that he will try to steal from the church. In uh, Daniel chapter, uh, well, we'll read chapter 1 and the following verses in the book of Daniel, brethren. Remember that when the, when the Chaldeans, Nebuchadnezzar, went to Israel, to Jerusalem, what did, he, what did they say to Babylon? They took two things. Number one, they took the what you call the vessels that were dedicated to the temple of God and were dedicated for the temple of God. And you know what those, those uh, dedicated uh, uh, vessels? Those were actually tithes. Say with me, tithes. There are two things that Satan and the Chaldeans and Nebuchadnezzar will fear. Now, Chaldeans represents what again in the Old Testament? There's the demons. There are two things they will steal. Number one, they will steal your tithes. Number two, they will steal the next generation. Because if you will read Daniel chapter 1, it speaks there that they stole actually those vessels that were actually dedicated to the temple of God. And they have taken the young people to the Babylonian Empire. Those are the two things that they actually stole. And I want you to see this one, brethren. This is what Satan will steal. In 1st John chapter 2 verse 15 and 16, do you remember what John says that do not love the world or the things in the world? If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, what is in the world? The loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father but is of the world. 
Now take note of this, and it seems that they actually put or placed in their body these young people were stolen by the Babylonians. Now let me explain to you in the spiritual side. Don't you know that this is where Satan is trying to put us down and trying to actually put his claws upon us? Number one is the pride, uh, the lust of the flesh. The last of the flesh. Now what is the last of the flesh, actually, brother? It is what you put in your body and what you do with your body. The last of the flesh. Now if you are not careful, brethren, what you put on your body can make you proud. Be careful. Anything that you put in your body, be sure that you are putting, I mean, wearing that to glorify the Lord. Can I hear you amen to that? Amen. Because if you don't, that is what you call the loss of the flesh. Now, what is the loss of the eyes? What you see that makes you smart that is the loss of the eyes. And there's a temptation, brethren, to all of us. Temptation to us. You know, well, I am smarter than the guy. I am smarter than them. That is what the demons, brethren. Comparing yourself and you are better than other people or your neighbor or your friends or your co-workers that is of the devil and that is pride and that is the lust of the eyes now i want you to take note of this because the pride of life is connected with tidings are you listening let me explain this to you brethren and i do not want you to uh, you know uh, i don't want to condemn you i love you because i am i am only revealing to you what the enemy is trying to do to the churches today. Now the pride of life, now how does it relate to tithings? Any person that doesn't tithe is arrogant. That is pride of life. Any person, now I, I do not want to condemn you brethren. I love you. Any person who doesn't tithe is arrogant. You know why I'm saying this? Because the person believes that he can make it his own way, not God's way. I have to be extremely arrogant not to tithe. Because I'm saying, man, this is a hard, you know, uh, this money I earn it from my hard work and I don't need to share it to God. I don't need to share it to the kingdom of God. Now I am actually saying to myself, I don't need you, God. I don't need you. And pride of life, brethren, is related to our tithes. And if I do not tithe and give my tithes to the Lord, I will be arrogant. Now you have to understand that if you, if I don't tithe, if you don't tithe, brethren, you are opening door to demons. Because that is exactly what the enemy does. He is what again? He is a thief. He is a thief. And I, I like what I said, I don't want to make you feel condemned, brethren, or to argue about tithings, but I am telling you that's an open door, and no matter how many doors you will close in your life, if you are not tithing, brethren, if you are not a tither, you will always have an open door for the enemy. You are so silent, brethren. Do you still love me? Yes. And I am sharing this to you, brethren. Because Satan and demons, they are thieves. They will steal from you and they will convince you you shouldn't be giving this and this and that and this and that. And we do not know, brethren, that when we give our tithes, we are opening the, what did the Bible say? The windows of heaven. We are opening it. And when we open the windows of heaven, blessings will come. Amen. 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 I mentioned about the preaching of this man who came to me for prayer, for prayer request, and he told me I was shocked. He said, Pastor, could you pray for me? What is your prayer request, brother? Oh, that the Lord will give me wisdom on how to handle my increase. Amen. <laughs> I like a prayer request. 
how can we ask for the glory giving wisdom on how to come the mountain peaks? And God will increase you because you are closing the door. And I, I like what I said better, if you are doing that, you are opening the door for the enemy. You know what demons are? They are wanderers. Number two, they are they are squatters. Have you seen squatters, brother? I don't know this man who actually sold his house to a Yakub or to a family, and he said, I'm selling my house to you, but can you spare me? Don't sell, I am not selling one nail on your doorpost. Okay. I'm selling you everything, but could you spare me this one nail on your doorpost? This is mine. And the owner who just bought his house said, okay, you can have that nail and do whatever you want to do with the nail. So they bought the house. After one week, lo and behold, the guy who sold the house, you know, put on that nail, a stinking squirrel. And he did that every week. He will hang dead animals in that nail. And the owner said, what are you doing? Get, take out this smell of thing. And, and then the sense of the we promise, isn't it? That you will spare me this one nail and whatever I do with this nail, you will bother me. That is the agreement. And he will, you know, catch, uh, you know, deer, and uh, that stinky deer will hang there for one week. If you are the owner of the house, what will you do? <laughs> it, no, you cannot be happy because that is your agreement. You cannot touch that nail with dead animal in it. That is agreement. And you know what happened? He ended up leaving the, the owner ended up leaving the house, sold it back to the person on a higher price. You know what I'm trying to say here, brother? Because Satan and demons are squatters. They will leave behind your house, better empty locations, empty places there, and soon you will see them living in the attic, and soon you will see them living in the room, and soon they will own your house. You know how they own your house? When you allow the work of the enemy, instead of you allowing your house for Bible study, you are actually using it for the glory of the enemy. Amen. That's why God has given us homes and houses for Bible study. I only heard one. Amen. Amen. For Bible study because God has given that house to us so that we can use it for the glory of God. Amen. But don't let that enemy put one nail rather than on that house of yours. Remove it. Take it out. Can I encourage you, brethren, that in this series, Let's keep out these quarters from our houses. Yeah. Let's agree. Let's kick them out. Okay. Yeah. Now, number two that I want to share with you about evil spirit. Demons, they are vicious. They are about chapter 7 to 9. They are terribly dreadful. Evil spirit are vicious, brethren. They are vicious. Now, they are ugly called wolves. You know what wolves? Satan and demons, they are vicious. They are enemies like wolves. They will come and try to eat you and destroy you. And that is the work of the enemy and Satan himself and work of, of, of uh, you know, evil spirit. Now, in Acts chapter 20, 29, for I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come among, in among you, not sparing the flocks. We have to be careful, brethren. If we are not careful, savage wolves will come in at our church. You know what those savage wolves are? Those are actually people who will come and destroy you and destroy, you know, the unity of the brethren. And we will not allow, you know, evil spirit and wolves to come and devour us. We will rise up in the name of the Lord. Because evil spirit and demons, they are vicious. Brethren, they are vicious. They won't give you actually time 
you know, to prepare. They will come when you are on your weakest point. Don't you know that evil spirit will come and attack you at night time? How many have you experienced that? They will come to you and attack you at night time. Have you ever experienced that? I experienced that. What do you do? Instead of you cleaning up the power button on your television, when you wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning and you cannot sleep, don't you ever take that uh, controller, that remote controller. I have that experience, brother, and I'm glad that I have a, uh, a small Holy Spirit in the house. You know the small Holy Spirit in the house? Pastora. And he said, Dad, instead of you watching CNN, why don't you pray? And, and like, you know, a small ship. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you have your husband or wife who will be reminding you. Amen. Can you hear amen to that? Amen. Because if there is no small Holy Spirit, brethren, I will be watching CNN, and the CNN I cannot sleep anymore, and all of a sudden I'll go to HBO, and HBO I will... Uh, I don't have HBO, by the way. And then and, 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 and the, uh, you know, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. And instead of you clicking, clicking, clicking the channel, channel, why don't you throw the controller and go to a corner and pray? Hallelujah. So that the enemy can not attack you. Because he will attack you in the weakest, in your weakest point. And all of a sudden, you'll begin to call somebody, and etc., etc., and then you end up doing something bad in the sight of the Lord. So instead of doing those where the enemy will attack you, why don't you pray? And if you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, why don't you speak in tongues? Hello? That is the perfect prayer. Hallelujah! And pray for your wife. Pray for your husband. Pray for your children so that the enemy won't attack you. And we will kick the squatters. Amen. Amen. And those are demons. Hallelujah. And we are more than conquerors. Yes. Demons are also cunning. Number two and number three, they are cunning. They are, you know, uh, full of deception. They are crafty. Hallelujah. In Daniel chapter 2, verse 2, then the kings gave the command to call the magicians, the astrologers, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans. You remember they mentioned him, the Chaldeans, to tell the king his dream. So they came and stood before the king. Now I want you to see that in Daniel chapter 2, verse 2, they, it is mentioned here, magicians, astrologers, and so on. That's true. <coughs> that is why we <laughs> will depend only on, on the word of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of God because I know that we are secured in the name of the Lord. We will stop here, brethren. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. You know what Peter is actually saying to us here? Listen to this. He's actually saying be so the word sober here is be in control. Amen. Be control of your soul. Be sober and don't be under the control of any spirit, but under the control of the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says, the enemy is like a roaring lion. Can I tell you this, brethren? Don't you ever be afraid of Satan. How many of you are afraid of demons here? How many of you are afraid of Satan here? Hallelujah. Can I tell you this? The rolling like give me five Gemma, you're not afraid of Satan. Let me share this to you. You don't need to be afraid of Satan. He is a rolling lion. And you know what a rolling lion is, Brother Tony? A rolling lion. Have you seen an old lion? Roland? A roaring lion is Satan himself, is an old lion who doesn't hear have any teeth. Hello? A roaring lion is an old lion! Jerry? You know what an old lion is? He can even walk. And he has no teeth. 
and that is Satan himself, because, hallelujah, in the book of Revelation 5, 5, it says here, but one of the elders said, do not weep, because the lion of the tribe of Judah, ha, the root of David, has prevailed. Say with me, prevailed. 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 So open the scroll and lose its seven seals. You are more than conqueror. You should be afraid of demons. You should be afraid of Satan himself. And don't you ever be a skeptic and superstitious. The Lord holds your hand and hold your future. And we won't be afraid of demons and Satan. Amen. Amen. I want us to stand. I want you to be honest today, brethren. In our prayer, have you been attacked by the enemy or is the enemy attacking you today? Yes. Is the enemy attacking you today? You need help, brethren. If you know and you know that the enemy is attacking you in the mind, attacking you in your emotion, that is of the devil, that is of demons. And we need to help one another, brethren. We are not here to condemn. We are not here to put down anybody. We are here to help. So if the enemy is attacking you, and you need prayer, can I invite you to come? And we will help you. Amen.